and welcome to the redacted culture cast this week is uh, so let's see what would be the day that this is going to be a monday show uh that doesn't help out very well for an intro but that's the way it goes <laughs> so to those of uh, if those if you're one of those folks who tends to listen to more podcasts than this one i can't really say shame on you but now that you've heard the laughter you might know who the guest is would oh, you introduce yourself hi guys i'm nathan from uh seaburn art um Better known as the Art and War podcast. I am so sorry if you you are hearing me because you're in for a uh, po- one to two hours of disappointment and and uh, yeah. Well, it's Thanks just like it's on. just like it's just like a Canadian to open up your uh, your introduction with an apology. So, <laughs> so let's just let that yeah, one fly. I run a podcast called uh, Redacted. It is an abstract object, an idea. When not being dependent on government is made, made illegal, you make outlaws of us all. Uh, sorry, I'm on your website. I was going to do a bit where I just read your podcast description, and, uh, <laughs> but I did it. I did it too late. Oh my goodness, this couldn't be more fluid because what I'm supposed to be talking about is some people are going to notice that there's new things starting to appear on the uh, on the on the website. But I yeah, mean, it's that's... a very professional looking. You did you did a good job. Well, well yeah, square for everything. It has it's to look professional, great. but it doesn't yeah. mean we have to be professional, right? Um, but the most important, I'm going to bring this up for those who are watching on, oh, let's see if I can even do that properly. For those who are watching on the, oh, for those who are, let, let's see, I'm clicking all the buttons. For those who are watching on YouTube, there's a small screen that popped up here uh, showing that. Boom. Nope, that's not going to work. We're just going to get rid of all these. I'm going to, I'm going to actually cut that section out. So for those who are still listening, who are now wondering why there's elevator music so early on, so early on in the show. <laughs> Uh, we are actually make for those who are still listening, who are wondering why there's elevator music so early on in the show. Um, <laughs> that's the way that this is going to have to go. We're doing, we're, we've put together a, a skateboard deck, um, for that, that, where the proceeds of this are going towards the firearms policy coalition, or they're going to the firearms policy coalition, the Thanks skate the decks. Time. Yep. It's the skate deck. Um, I, 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 I am not a skater. I have get, I'm getting started. It's something that I've used recently for like getting out of the house, especially in the COVID time. So I, I started I, I started learning how to skateboard about a year and a half ago. I'm probably worse than when I started, but it is one thing that we saw. It's in it's in it's in collaboration with Orion Training Group. The deck is going to come in in a pre-order format, limited release. It's the only deck we're dropping this year. And all the proceeds go towards the Firearms Policy Coalition re- dealing with the brace ruling. That being said, if you head over there or, or we'll stay tuned, we'll get some announcements on it soon because the date should probably be coming up here. Not as in like if this is coming out on Monday, we should be talking about Friday at the latest. We'll start. We're getting the pre-order started. So stay tuned for that. If you're not interested in the skate deck, we season one operation two is live at the time of this re- recording. The postcards have not yet hit the mail. If you're wondering if you're going to get a postcard, here's how you figure out if you're on the list. One, if you've purchased something from our merch site, I have your address. Therefore, I, I can send you the postcard, which starts the process of indoctrination into season one, operation two. If you are not, if you have not purchased merch from us, or you are interested in supporting the show, hopefully by this time. That was the platform we've chosen. If you want to, if you want to uh, support the show. Supporting the show gets you automatically included in the operations process. And so that should or could be available. You can find that at. It says that it's still under review. I don't know what that means anymore. I don't know how to fix it. So, but that's, that's, that's the business end done taken care of moving on. So Nate. Hello. Uh, so you, you, uh, I was, I was able, I like your podcast was one of the things where I was like, Oh, I'm enjoying this. I, that was one of the times where I started, <laughs> I started, well, I, 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 we got to meet this year at shot show. So that's, that's a cool yeah. thing. But, um, you know, in, in, in the arena that we we live in and in within it comes to gun culture. It, one of the things I think it's been consistent in consistently relevant in what we refer to as gun culture is that it's sort of expanding beyond the gun safe. The idea of gun culture is getting much bigger than the idea than than simply this sort of 
hobby like pastime of possessing things yes th this kind of nebulous definition of sport shooting or self defense or mm -hmm. just simply ha owning an object and having it you know make you safe in a uh, really unclear way i'm glad we're moving past that i genuinely am it's it's kind of becoming a more well rounded thing including you know basic self sufficiency small unit tactics everything mm -hmm. from as you were talking about Orion Training Group, it runs a CQB academy that civilians can attend. Or, you know, you can do Siri, you can do basically anything you want. And that's actually becoming part of the culture that's being talked about instead of just being derided or uh, made fun of. Yeah, I think uh, like uh, uh, as many times as we try to diagnose it and describe it, it seems like what we're looking at is somewhat more of a fractioned um a fractioned and not economy but a fraction society like even it was like seven or eight years ago where Colin noir was making a movie about there was four different versions of him all representing different sections of gun culture arguing amongst each other and like that's only one microcosm of the greater macrocosm of there's like the military civilian divide there was the who can train with who divide there was the who's cooler than who issues and it seems like as of right now so much of that is smoothed over. And so we could talk about how it's great that gun culture is so much more, maybe not united, but unanimous. Uh, however, I think, I think that like now we're looking at kind of the next step and where are we going forward and, and how does that impact other elements of our lives? And a good example of it was we had uh, Jack Potter from Guerrilla Tactical on talking about well, what like I would yeah, well, he was talking about like homesteading, and it wasn't yeah. really homesteading. He said that himself, but I mean, I'm sorry. The more self sufficient you get, the closer it looks like the homesteading. Um, and I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on like you know the, the 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 attitude of the of the of of gun culture and and how you've seen like in the maybe the last year you've seen things change, but really where you think that's like what's a good direction that we're moving in, or or even through the process of running a show, what are the things that you've seen that have really stood out amongst, you know, this community, if you want to call it that word at all? I'd like to say that, um, God, that, that's a tough one. I'm, I'm not quite as, as whips. You know, I, I don't quite, you know, that thing where a lot of thumbs thoughts dump themselves into your head at the exact same time. And you're not quite sure which one falls out of your mouth first. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just start rambling and hope that I can make a concise line. I'm, I'm being facetious, but yes. Yeah, I, I vomit words. And unfortunately, I'm at that point already, you know, all of seven minutes into this podcast where I'm trying not to repeat myself because the first thing that comes to my mind is exactly kind of what I just said. It's this movement away from of just like owning an AR-15 that you bought in Palmetto State Armory for 400 bucks and putting it into your safe and you know meg dumping a trash once a year and actually getting the accompanying skills to use them and not just that it's it's you, you notice this a lot with firearms people they're usually also into self-sufficiency of all sorts you know distilling their and uh, purifying their own water uh homestead communities schooling um becoming less reliant on systems that uh i'm not i'm trying so 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 hard not to be overly political um relying less on the government <laughs> yeah i think we've i mean we've had this conversation a number of times and the odd yes. one that one 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 example of it not you and i but the conversations come up in other times like there's a pretty hard distinction between like the self-sufficiency of today versus yeah. the self-sufficiency of the 90s where like the 90s it was actually very isolating like i'm gonna go into the mountains or the woods i'm gonna build a bunker i'm I'm going to store 20 years of food and then when i get my that my bug out feeling i'm just going to leave and and quite selfishly wait for everyone else to deal with the fallout and then rebuild everything and then i'm just going to emerge from my bunker as like the hero or whatever and it's and and whereas contemporary culture our day and age seems to be a lot more focused on on not being so fragile in how dependent we are on complex systems that we have no real influence over or that we have, you know, little influence over who or that, or even more so that have great influence over us. The price of eggs has an influence over our, over my life. Yeah. How do I make myself less fragile to the, the whim of the market? Yeah. Hell, mm -hmm. I mean, my power bill alone has over doubled in the last year that's not fun it's not fun um 
we where I live particularly, we have an oligopoly on power, and it is actually illegal to generate your own and uh, be off the city grid. Um, my my average bill last year was about three hundred. This year, uh, for this month, it was six hundred and thirty dollars, and I have not done anything out of the ordinary. So you haven't like started live streaming seven e girls in your basement or something like that? I mean, maybe I have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! I am the e girl. <laughs> uh, that, that's what I do to to fund all of all of Arden War. That's how I pay my producer. I just yeah. uh, I, I sell my used socks on the internet. Okay, I'm 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 gonna very quickly move on because now I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll give you a discount, but uh, uh, no, uh... It, not doing anything out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Not quite sure how that happened, but I'm sure it's it's tied into the same reason eggs are ten dollars a carton now. Yeah, I, I it's it, it becomes one of those challenges where like I know that th there are certain things that I have control over and there's certain things that I don't. Yeah. And and it's is as as never endingly frustrating as it is for there to be no control over certain elements of our lives. You know, it's 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 like it, 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 I could very quickly get black pilled and very, very demoralized and say, yes. like, there's nothing I can do. I'm just stuck here in this hellish world where all of my rights are being stripped away and all of my freedoms are being crushed and all of my video favorite video games are being taken over by you know activists and all my favorite whatever it is right yeah. the you know um but one one side of gun culture um uh, that i've one thing that i have enjoyed about even the times that i have listened to your show is that it doesn't i don't dwell permanently in like the 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 wretchedness of it all it's there is something to be found and there's good to be found in what you guys talk about so Thank you. I, I have a, a, a little motto from a movie that I enjoyed a long time ago. I think it came out in 2004. Um, mm -hmm. It's called Old Boy. Um, and that that is laugh. Um, sorry. Fuck. I know you don't uh, edit this, so I'm basically going to come out sounding like an idiot. Um, laugh in the world laughs with you. Cry and you cry alone. And I kind of internalize that like I, I don't see the point in in um dwelling over things that you can't have any control over even if you can have any control over them uh think about the people who are pushing these things through um uh end result of it is entirely yes to make you miserable a lot of this legislation that's coming through there is no better way to describe it than punishment um mm -hmm. and if you let that actually destroy your day and you know keep you keep you in a heightened sense of of stress or uh, anxiety or anything like that they are winning by definition they're winning so what do you think we were kind of bouncing this around before we got started and i want to and we but we actually never talked about it in the pre-show which is kind of where i'm like ah damn probably worked out well for us um yeah. but it, the, the, this idea of like demoralization and yeah. and one element within gun culture one sort of let's just call it like a meta meme that's kind of bounced around the different arenas especially in like the the intel intel light community the intel light side the 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 different like the, the 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 different like you know who's paying attention to what's going on where kind of thing is this idea of the psyop yes. everything's a psyop right this everything's idea everything's a psyop and I, you know, I think that that uh when everything's a psyop nothing is sorry continue exactly well i mean i think that that's a that's a that's a great description of like it, when when psyop becomes the monomania the the single word explanation for all things going on yeah. Uh, it, it, it then ends in only, it can only end in self-destruction. Like it, it yeah. can only end in the destruction of the self. And I don't mean that in like, it doesn't even have to come with violence. It might just be like the abdication of consciousness. You just like, well, I'm done. I'm going to float in my miasma of black pills for the rest yeah. of my life. But there, there is, there are relevant elements, especially in what's going on today. And one of those being like, the question, one of those that stands on my, uh, that stands kind of front and center is this brace ruling right now. And the one concern that I have coming forward with the brace ruling is not actually so much that it's like, it's going to pass because, uh, you know, people are going to people like I mean, humans are going to figure it out. And when we will, I'm not saying that we're going to, we have a glorious future ahead of us. It's that, well, it sucks. 
but yep. it does it's not an unsolvable problem what does concern me is that it will become but because of demoralization within let's just say gun culture it will result in the fragmentation of our our community or our cultures or our friendships or our relationships and that all of gun culture people like you and me will no longer evaluate each other on the level of friend ally and i don't mean that in like the wokey way i mean that like like you're a friend you're a, you're someone that i can trust to now going you know i, I wonder if nate's going to like comply and then, you know, or I wonder if like my friend is going to comply. And I know friends that are like, oh, now I have a hierarchy of friends where like the least likely to comply versus the most likely is this tower. And and, and I'm seeing it in myself. So I want to see, I want to hear your thoughts on that. Hear my thoughts on, uh, oh God. Demoralization. Sorry. I, I tend yeah, to no, like no, elaborate. It's, no, it's totally okay. Um, that is rough. I, I live in Canada. Um, as, as of right now, I spend a lot of time in the States and I'm, I'm hoping to move there full time. Please, God, do not judge me for being Canadian. I don't like it any more than you do. Um, well, I was South Canadian for a while. You were so, yes, yes. Minnesota. Don't I don't you know. know. Don't you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I saw it myself with, you know, people who, you know, the, the coming assault weapon bans are like the assault weapon bans are rumored or semi-auto bans are rumored and people are selling their things right and left. And I caught myself doing it just like, hey, hey, if you do this, you're a fucking pussy. You, you're, uh, you are basically letting these people that you didn't, you know, consent to, uh, to be basically being your, your magical daddy that lives across the country and makes all of your decisions for you you're predicating the decisions you make in your life and the decisions about you know how you protect your yourself and your family on the fear of someone holding you accountable and sending men with guns to to you know go spank you and i understand it i i caught myself you know judging people quite harshly on that but i, I realized too that a lot of people's situations and um namely how they stack their life priorities aren't the same as mine. And I, I realized that, especially in gun culture and probably any special interest group down to God, competitive vaping, knit, knitting, uh, ultimate Frisbee, whatever, the deeper you go down any rabbit hole, the more extreme the personalities are going to get. And I feel like a lot of what we get, you know, you and I being as deep into this culture as we are, and most likely anyone that uh, is listening to this, we get a very distilled view of what the um the overall like the, the what gun culture 3.0 is and i, I want to say yes it's moving in the right direction everything's moving in the right direction but your average consumer of you know firearms or that your average person doesn't see any of this um the, these online corners that where we see people bullying each other most people aren't in them mm. So uh, I, I can't help, but, you know, I, I'll feel sorry when I, I see someone getting bullied for complying with their brace or not knowing any better, but at least I have to acknowledge that most people aren't really privy to the things that we are and they don't exist within the same circles that we do. Yeah, maybe one of them would be like levels of investment and I don't, and this is not, you know, like I, I've been trying to think of like a different form of a, a different metaphor or a different model to kind of explain how I think about this, 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 um, growing in this, this, I would, and when I say growing, I mean, both in width and depth yes. of, uh, but, uh, this growing concept of, of gun culture, it was like Fred Baker of, of, uh, Counting Coup, who was saying, his, I, I like him a lot. He's a, yeah, I do too. But his 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 hope, what his his idea at the near kind of near the end of our our conversation was that in ten to twenty years, this idea of there being gun culture would be irrelevant because it would just be Americana again. And yeah. I and I and I and I vibe with that to sound like the Zoomers, but yeah. uh, but but the point I've been thinking about it is like in many ways, I think we've seen kind of the we've seen gun culture in many ways focus a lot on spreading wide and this is where you see you know uh organizations going out of their way to try to kind of pander to diversity quotas or 
uh you know this sort of like you know i'm a woman and a gun owner too it's like to most most people in gun culture that that was not a present a relevant subject it was just like you're 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 part of the culture or not that's kind of how it works uh, and so like, you know, you don't, you, you, whether or not you're a woman is irrelevant. It's just, you're, you're, you're in the culture. Now there are other examples and I, and I don't stand alone, but for you were, you made kind of this distinction where a certain amount of people were kind of like, like us in this example, we're pretty deep in the sauce. Yeah. Right. It's so like in, 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 in an element, one element of running a show, especially one like yours, which has been around for as long as it has considering how there is this element of burnout within this culture where people get into it, they get really excited. And then within six or 18 months, they usually, they can oftentimes burn out. You guys have been consistent over time. And, and so, but one part of being able to do that is, is having kind of a rootedness in how, you know, how, how deep you are in, in, ingrained. And so if I were to think of a metaphor, I would think of like older for a while, a lot of gun culture has been focused on width of how wide it can get, how many people are in it and how many are. But at the same time, it's an inverted triangle. And m the majority of the population, you know, there used to be this kind of thin wide line with a couple of lines that were really deep. Whereas now it's a triangle where like the people who are listening to this show are infinitely more invested in gun culture than the average gun owner was five years ago. Or yeah. 10 years ago, the person who listens to your show, they're invested in gun culture, not like somebody's invested into NASCAR. Yeah. You know, and and I'm trying to make this commentary just because of uh, I'm, I'm making this commentary based on like on the one sense what I feel. But what I see in the people that I interact with is that like gun culture, this idea that we're talking about is so much more rooted in our life in the sense of like. It's not a NASCAR thing. I don't have all the, the logos and the stickies and the, the like, you know, I don't paint my my mailbox Daniel Defense yellow because I'm supporter of Daniel Defense and I love the team. It's more like, you know, this is just kind of what we do. And and yeah. and I and I find more people in that camp than in the casual camp. Yes, absolutely. Uh shot show was a huge white pill for me in that that kind of way. Mm -hmm. And it, it was great meeting you there and Fred and basic, basically everyone else. And uh, it, it was my first real dive into tangible gun culture in the United States or anywhere, really. He, um, less of the, the whole FUD-centric, um, you know, thin blue line waving, you know, don't tread on me right over the thin blue line sticker on their 2004 Tacoma. Um where was I even going with this? I don't know. Uh, just like it's not only breadth, it's depth in cultures, yes. right? I left off is that it's, it's just across the board. There's so much more healthy investment. Yes. Okay. Um, and I didn't really see any of the, the negative stereotypes that I'm so used to. Perhaps I didn't look hard enough. Perhaps I was enamored in the, uh, the whole newness of all of it. But, You're not the only one who made that observation. And I wanted to hear your perspective on it coming from, you know, as, as you, as you, as you produce your stuff and as we're talking, you 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 know, you have, you do have the Canadian perspective. It, there's a certain context that that provides, but like what, how, what, what have you seen within your, the circle of influence that you have, or just your own life where you've gone from maybe black pill to white pill to black pill and trying to, and, and back and forth and like, how have you conceptualized that the the optimism pessimism kind of matrix that is a lot of gun culture because it is easy to find reasons to be pessimistic. A hundred percent. I think uh, my my answer is probably not as nuanced or or uh, I guess the the word to be the the word to use would be smart. Um, it's probably not as smart as some people as some of this would be hoping for, which are I just don't like being miserable. I don't okay. like being sad. I don't. I don't like this. This like never-ending loop of Kafkaesque nihilism that that a lot of people are are always. Uh, and I I do not fault it at all. I I used to be at a point where you know the government would make an announcement. I guess our, our equivalent of the brace rules or you know anything to do with the culture war. And I would get this awful sinking feeling in my stomach, and you know I'd message my friends and I, it would ruin my day. Mm -hmm. And now it's just. 
hey, cool, more you know laws that people can just ignore. More like if you if you let this affect your day in in a way that is like, and I, I don't fault anyone for for getting upset. I really don't. I think people have to get upset to to a degree, but. The, as long as there is a culture war, this is going to keep happening. It, it okay. absolutely is. And and uh, we'll look at it with, an, and I'm not going to get into the weeds with this, but a good example would be vaccine mandates. And I, I don't want to get political on this, and I'm not going to talk about either either way, especially after the science had come out on, you know, does this decrease transmissibility? No, but we're going to keep these in place anyway. There, there's no two ways around it. It's a punishment. It's it's to, uh, fuck the other side. We're going to do this because it makes your life more inconvenient. It's because it, it makes you into criminals. It's because it, it'll segregate you from the per, a part of the population. That's what both sides of the political aisle do all the fucking time. And letting it really affect your day instead of just finding ways to, one, fight it, and or two, ignore it, or three, both. It's... A waste of your energy and it's letting them win okay <clears throat> so let's use that as an example because like there is there is there is, the, 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 going back to the psyop thing there's this there there it's not so hard to to kind of conceptualize the idea that the timing and uh, ambiguity of the atf's brace ruling in the united states is in some form of a way like a psyop as yes. in 100%. We need we need to distract you. We need or we need to create some sort of we want to create some sort of social outcome, maybe a demoralization with the population, even though that we know it won't stick. Yeah. Um, or it could be a virtue signal or it could be all these different things. Right. Yeah. One uh, that's that's one example. Another one would be um, and I'll use this example right now within contemporary American cultures, apparently or not apparently. Um it was like two nights ago. I, I at the time of this recording, so you know we're recording or a couple nights ago, whatever. Um, it would have been a week after this by the time this is live, but it would have been there was a shooting at the Michigan State University. There was a, a, a mass shooting, you know, and I'm yeah. using air quotes in the sense of like, I mean, the tech, the the definition is pretty clear, but its relevance is is sort of odd. Um, yeah, it, it disappeared off the uh, off the news very, very, very quickly. Oh, it disappeared very, very quickly. But yeah. you know, it 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 was like it was, it was this this big hullabaloo. And one thing that you see that I, I like I've seen in in my milieu here in in America is that every time there's a what it, there, any every time there's an event that the the media american media would refer to as a mass shooting there's usually a certain period of time that's just hell and yeah. that's because immediately the first thing that happens is it's vi it's vitriol it's just poisonous vitriol anyone who's in gun culture is immediately labeled as a baby murdering child killing blah 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 right yeah. And and then anyone who's like and then those people are usually just completely clobbered over the head metaphorically with just like, how about you don't do like, OK, you're standing on people's corpses. And it just turns into this like sludge fest uh, or slug fest of, of lowest common intellect points of anger and hatred. And um and so, like, as far as a culture war, I wanted to kind of hear what you thought, what you would describe a culture war as, because I've heard that word a lot and it gets used too much. What's your, what, what would you define a culture war to be or the culture war? You're absolutely right in the fact that it, it uh, gets used too much. Um, and I, I don't want to say it's as nuanced as, you know, there's two sides. Uh, I can't remember who said it the, the other day. It's like there, there's not one or two or even five Americas. There's a thousand Americas. There, there's all sorts of special interest groups. There's all sorts of people who want to impose their will on the on you know the uh, the population that doesn't agree with them, or simply be left alone, which uh, is more the camp that I I like to think of myself falling into. Um, but to to distill it, and probably how most people would think, would be simply the uh the creation of both policy media and social movements um just the coordination of all three to to uh punish or control one part of the population that is deemed as a, an enemy so it's 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 um persecution the culture yep. war is persecution 
That's what it, you're saying. Essentially, though, I, I think a lot of or people... The culture war that. produces persecution? Yeah. Would that be a more yeah. accurate way of saying it? Okay. Yeah, the that, use that, of, I mean, that, that's kind of a dramatic way of saying it, but... but the I mean, use of persecution so. to accomplish personal and political goals? Yes, and it's probably not, you know, interpreted by a lot of the people putting these things in place as persecution, but that is, at the, uh, de facto, that's, that's what it ends up being. You couldn't, I, I don't think you could describe anything that's going on within gun culture or guns in America that is anything short of persecution. I agree. Like it's, 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 a, I think, I don't think you could describe it as anything form of anything short of just overt cultural persecution in the yeah. sense of the brace ruling is the perfect example. The only people yeah, that's that not it making anyone safer, that's not changing anything. And the they know only, that. Yeah. The only people that it affects are the convenient political enemies of the characters who are involved with setting forth this ruling. Yes. You know, you know, it, it's, it's a very clear form of persecution. It's going to yeah. make your life living hell to deal with our administration for our ends yes so yeah. I, I remember i i had a uh, a tenant a, a while ago but by, by that i mean you know over covid and I, I got along with the guy a little bit he, he was very you know staunch probably authoritarian liberal um mm -hmm. but you know and when we didn't talk about politics we'd get along more or less and one day i i really had to ask his opinions about things like this and you know things like the brace ban things like um putting policy into place that didn't actually statistically change anything what is the rationale was for that and obviously this is an anecdotal example this is one person of many but i really wanted to at least get one person's actual mindset he's a really intelligent guy he, he uh very eloquent spoke well you know he had opinions uh qu quite a few and i well, I didn't agree with him about basically anything. I really wanted to know. And his his answer was, well, you know, these cosmetic features, things like that, these are enjoyed by a certain po portion of the population, which, you know, skews racist. They skew so and so. It, it's all these talking points about, you know, the, the alt-right, these nebulous, invisible bad guys that are more likely to, to like that. And, uh, you know, our conversation continued. And I was asking, well, hey, isn't that, you know, one, on one end, punishment but on two um you, you are simply trying to control part of the population with policy even though you know that it doesn't actually do anything what what is the point of it what's the what's the end goal if you know it's not going to actually make things any better and that's exactly what he said he was trying to stomp out the culture stomp out the uh, the idea of people actually getting into it because the, in his head anyway, there is a distinct correlation between, you know, domestic terrorists, again, put whatever definition of domestic terrorist you want. I'm pretty sure you can be called that for, uh, for anything now. Um, no, according to Barbara Walters, who's one or Barbara Walter, Barbara F. Walter. Yeah. I, uh, Barbara, according to Barbara F. Walter, who is the author of how civil wars start whose 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 self avowed statement is that she's a prominent component within a think tank that addresses civil war across the the, the world uh all that's necessary to be considered a militia violent extremist is own a gun and go to church really you're, you're a part well I, and and this is not i am i am not i wish i could say that was hyperbole it's not de facto what she stated but the way that the it, but that how she writes her argument is that you have to have some form of commitment to a community and, and be, and, and be, you know, and train in a firearm. And so like, if you're, you're at it, you, you have any loyalty to anything other than whatever she thinks is you should like a church, a community that would, you, you get all, you go hang out with your friends, your, 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 your youth group or not your youth group. Jeez. That sounds weird. You go hang out with your men's group or your church, your Bible study or whatever, and you also carry a gun at church because you're concerned about threats in the area. Now you're considered a, a militia yeah. or an extremist that 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 harbors the potentiality. Maybe it was was it Barbara Walters or was it? Yeah, yeah that was Barbara uh, Walter. So, yeah, Bar Barbara Walter, not Barbara Walters, the actress. Yeah, Barbara F. Walter, uh, author of uh, How Civil War Start. And that was just the weakness of the argument. And now there are good things that she says in the book, but one of the main challenges is that. Um, whether or not Barbara Walter is capable of recognizing it, she is so overtly, she is so overtly consumed by a, 
uh, a a maybe it's a um, uh, a bubble. May, she maybe she might li- exist so deeply in an echo chamber, but her ability to perform realistic definitions and understandings of the world is basically lost. Yes. She exists within a fictional environment at this point in time. And what what I hate about that is people. A lot of these people who exist in within fictional environments guide policy, and people be, because of this policy, people will you know be arrested. People will be killed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean the classic example is the open the opening chapter and sort of emph- the 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 the, uh, the story that provides oomph to her argument was the governor Governor Whitmer plot in Michigan, which turned <laughs> out to which turned out to be a hoax. Yeah, 13 now, out of 15 were informants. Exactly. So you're like, was it 13 out of 15? I thought it was like seven out of, I don't remember. It was, I, but I like some of them, some of them were, 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 uh, so, some of them were even, were, what is it? Um, not released, but absolved of whatever the word is. Um, they were not, their, their, their charges did not go through because the jury said, you can't punish this guy for doing what he was told to by the government. Yeah. That, that's, you know? entrapment it's entrapment, the very entrapment. definition of entrapment but that and was the source of that was like the motive of her argument of like this is evidence that the right is trying to do civil war it's like you're so uh, you know and she's even she's better off of a, a reader than someone like malcolm nance who's you know most likely to commit war crimes on the shelf right now so yeah love the guy don't really but <clears throat> Sorry, that was a that was a, a big diatribe. I shouldn't have no, gone. No, that no, no, you're totally okay. I, I enjoy it. I, I, the, you've heard my show. It's eighty percent diatribes. It happens. So the question that I was going on with this one is, you know, like how have you seen? How, like you said, you face demoralization by basically saying no, like kind of kind of denying yes. it, because it, it, it is yeah. just a a. Uh, it, it's how you view your world and the, your perspective of how you view the world, which will dictate how you feel about it. There's a certain amount of duty that's going to be required to like, sometimes you may be demoralized, but that doesn't mean the right thing shouldn't be done. Like do the 100%. right thing. Do, I, I, I heard a quote recently and it was not like a serious one. It was just one of those like Instagram scrolly moto things, I guess. And it was like, um, you know, even when you're tired, do it when you're tired kind of thing. Even when you're, you're, you're depressed, do it when you're depressed or something like that. It's just this, this, this sort of repeated mantra of like, don't let your temperament at the moment be determining over whether or not you do the right thing. And I was like, ah, you know, it sounds simple, but over time, I think that makes sense. If you can integrate it into the right time. Oh, I need to be doing the right thing. I don't feel like it, but I should. Yeah. So I absolutely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I I think this provides kind of a a segue too, because we were talking about, you know, like de- demoralization and psyops. And we started just briefly getting into the AI conversation. <laughs> how do you want to, how do you want to broach AI? Cause we were, t- cause there's, th- I think there's, there's like, there's kind of three things top of mind right now, but there's three things that I've been inter- interested in having a conversation with you. And one, one of them was the idea of like looking at demoralization, mass formation psychosis is another word that's used. The sort of Yuri Bezmanov argument of like, you're going to demoralize the population. Um, you're going to demoralize the population. I, um, another good book. Sorry, we'll get into that later. But uh, uh, you'll demoralize the population through and then you will kind of break down complex systems. And you could say with what's going on in our country right now, that's happening right before our eyes. But there's a lot there's a lot of weight that gets attached to said s- statements that is usually used a little bit too flippantly for my tastes ai go yes i have made this this uh this statement probably two or three times already but i find it infinitely ironic that you know back in the 70s and 80s and 90s the the prediction for ai was uh ai based automation would take over the mundane aspects of our lives so we could you know reach a new era of enlightenment through the arts and music and and everything and it would help bolster human creation but instead we're seeing the exact opposite of that where it's taken over art and music and writing so we can focus more on our our nine to five jobs that pay i don't know ten dollars an hour so we can spend an hour worth of wages on a carton of eggs um 
That is witty. I like it. I didn't. I have not thought of it before. I've not thought of it that way. But it did the exact opposite of what it was predicted to do. Yeah, it's. I, I I'm sure that you know it, it's a tool. It's it's like all others, and my especially as an artist, and I, I work in the art space, and I've seen how it has affected me negatively. Mm. When AI art became mainstream, um, I've, I saw clients that came to me quite often switch to AI art. I can recognize it. It's, it's not particularly hard to recognize when you know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, it, it will most likely pass that stage as well. But I, I've seen so many... Uh, the, the month where it became very mainstream and everyone, you know downloaded Lepsy and, you know, Wonder and all of that. Um, normally I'll do between 10 and 15 jobs in a month, a low amount, probably five if for my, for my side job, which is just, you know, illustration, it dropped down to one or two. Um, and, you know, I've, it, it's shot back up since then. I think people have realized the, uh, the strengths and limitations to it. So there is an argument to be made for it affecting, especially artists and, Definitely writers. I, I know people who who do their professional writing and copywriting with ChatGPT, um, and you know we're we're going to ignore the 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 implications of you know AI and emerging artificial intelligences for now, and we'll focus on what's tangible, which is what already exists. Um, that being said, I kind of liken the the anti AI push to. The best example I can think of is in the uh, the 1800s during the the crux of the Industrial Revolution, um, which was a it, it, the Industrial Revolution's consequences were disastrous for the human race. By the way, we won't get into that right now. Uh, Do tell, but not yet. Yes. Um, anyways, the invention of the sewing machine. So when the sew the sewing machine was invented. It was a, a full-time and fairly lucrative job for tailors to simply just make pants all the time or make shirts or make every article of clothing had to be sewn painstakingly by someone who's that was their entire career. That's what they trained for. That's what they did all the time. The sewing machine made all of that obsolete. Um, uh, with a sewing machine, and I, re I remember, you know, reading about this, um, you would put together a pair of pants in half an hour. And that's exactly how they'd advertise. It's set up in a public area of town. And they would show a single person making pants in half an hour with the sewing machine. And tailors fucking rioted. They, you know, tried to burn down the plants. They were, you know, protesting in the streets. Kind of, you know, a modern example would be uh, taxi drivers protesting Uber. But what, what uh, I'm trying to, you know factor and what I, I think people should when they look in this is it's simply the inevitable just advance of technology you can complain you can be upset about it you can you know do whatever write to your your politician demand legislation to uh, to curb these things but whatever makes life easier for business the government creators whatever will eventually be adopted at large and it will like technology improves. That's all there is to it. Um, whether we like it or not, AI is now part of our lives and it's going to be used more and more and more. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. So like uh, may, I, I have a, a series of important distinctions in terms is like it progresses as one term, it improves as another one, um, it advances as another one. Um, advances and progresses both imply direction that they're aiming yes. at something whereas improves could say could uh, imply something of simply more yes. uh, and i remember growing up in like the 90s and the early 2000s where like the story was every year the capability of the computer doubles yes like and so like you know i remember running internet on 14.4 kilobytes a second and then like a year later it was 24.8 and then two years later it was like two megabytes and then it just this kind of like endless progression of like i could not have imagined well i guess you could have but like the idea of having 10 gigabyte speed internet at in 2002 was like oh completely foreign i could download the entire contents of my computer a hundred times in an hour you know kind of thing or in a minute or whatever is is was so different than what we have today and 
and so there's this kind of inevitable in distinction or the distinction I'm talking about in like the progress ones is that if you're going to talk about progress, you have to talk about in which direction, which is why the American political or whatever the socio-political term referring to progressive is somewhat absurd at this point in time. It's not saying that it hasn't had its place. It's just that we're progressive towards what? Suicide, clearly. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and so... Um, so moving on in in that language, like what do you mean by AI improving and and how would that like it's getting more capable? We can't get away from it, but why would you say that's necessarily detrimental because it it doesn't have you have you're you're smuggling in evaluative statements into that phrase. How do you mean? I'm sorry, you're going to have to break that down slightly more. Uh, you just so you made a statement about the industrial revolution being catastrophic for the human race, and then, <laughs> and then, and then, you, and then you, and then you said, "Well, but the yeah. industrial revolution is inevitable," and then you're, and so that you're, you're basically referencing how this this level of technology is inevitable and catastrophic. Which oh has, the the uh, catastrophic part that that was a bit of a meme. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, uh, re readers of uh, my my uncle uh, Ted will will recognize <laughs> it, but that that wasn't a that wasn't oh, yeah. a particularly serious statement on my behalf. So okay, you should probably just... strike that from um from your oh. line of thinking. Oh, okay, good. Because like I, yeah. I I didn't think I wasn't worried about you being like a Ted Kaczynski, Kaczynski person. It's just that like <laughs> the. The, 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 it's like, cause that's not a thing. That's a meme. It's a joke. Yes. It's like, you know, it's, it's like, it's... but the point that I'm saying is like criticizing the ind industrial revolution in one way could be like pissing into the wind. It doesn't matter. Yes. The other yes. side about it is that like, he was wrong. The, he was, he was wrong on multiple levels. He was able to, in the same way that Marx was able to observe things being done wrong. Like he was wrong by his execution. Yes. Yes. And, I, and, I, I don't think that there's anyone who can uh, can deny that. And if they uh, if they do deny that, there's probably a little something screwy up there. It's just you need to you need to take it seriously. And like yes. I get it, it's a joke. But it's the same thing that we saw in gun culture with the Boogaloo Boys thing. Is yes. everyone thought it was a joke, and then a bunch of people took it seriously, and it didn't work out well for them. Yes. You know, uh, it's it's the yeah, same. You, you kind of saw the the collapse of that in real time. But, it um, happened in front of my face. I was in Minneapolis at the time, and that was the death of the Boogaloo Boy movement because they all came – this – people called themselves Boogaloo Boys, came to Minneapolis, immediately got arrested for doing dumb shit, and then – and I self-identified themselves as, oh, we're the Boogaloo Boys, and then everyone else in the world was like, yeah, no, you're the guys who, like, no one wanted. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like – I don't – that's not the right way to say it, but it's like you you, you, you took – you took a joke that was a joke and you made it your personality like oops and you paid for it. So it happens all across it happens all across culture and I guess I'm getting a little heated on it so. No, 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 you're you're totally okay. You're totally okay. It's uh language is important. It is. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to AI, you know like when it comes to AI um it's such a, I know it's such a hot topic right now. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm kind of struggling to consider how I think about it. Have you, have you used any of the, the primary AIs? I've used some AI or I've done some AI generated art usually to try to figure out different concepts on how, like I can try to tie two things together. Um, but I, I, I I've, so I, I have used AI generated art and then I've thought about things like, you know, like how hard is it to just use an AI to generate doodles that you can then print into stickers and then sell them on, you know what I mean? Like what is AI art going to do to the t-shirt industry and what is AI art going to do to like, you know, the, 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 the more, what, uh, these are the things that I thought about. Cause like when it comes to the Turing test and it comes to conversation on like AI can, can, can artificial intelligence become sentient? The, my 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 basic answer is no, but that's grounded in metaphysics. To be a human being and, and to be sentient requires something more that cannot be artificially produced, and that is the soul. Like I don't I don't I don't think you can produce you can produce something that convinces people that it's that it's conscious, but just because people are convinced that a thing is conscious does not make it so. I'm inclined to agree with that. Yes. And so and that being said, if, you know, I robot happens, I'm, I'm not going to be the first person to be in the streets uh, campaigning for these things to not have any civil rights, soul or not. 
but um yeah i mean i i just i I don't know how you could apply civil rights to to an ai it's it doesn't have a soul it doesn't have consciousness yeah it's impossible but then again there's a really good i I heard a really good argument saying that ai is not going to recreate mankind it's going to move in its own direction yes and so you know like again like you were saying when it comes to art you can tell that it's ai generated and i'm not exactly sure how unless it's mostly uh unless it's all ai 11 fingers problem yeah is is four or 11 fingers or whatnot but uh Mm -hmm. most ai art is derivative of obviously there are going to be cases where you can't tell Mm -hmm. there there simply are but it draws on existing pools of existing artists work Mm -hmm. if you put a bunch in a room next to each other um i I can probably bring up an example this doesn't work there's no visual aspect to this never mind um (laughs) but Specifically, it's where is the art coming from? How it, it is not particularly good yet, and we're going to see probably within the next year or two, all of the things that you do notice are going to disappear. Um, uh, certain ways, the, the light will hit something. You know, all of the shadows will be in different directions, or the lighting won't make any sense, it, it, or anything like that. Or it is clearly drawing from a like you can recognize what art it's drawing from, mm. or like it, there's a particular particular airbrushed quality to a lot of it it's interesting to see, especially letters uh letters mm-hmm. or text are a big one because it, it hasn't figured that out quite yet mm-hmm. um because it's, it's processing things as a picture not actually as anything that can contain contain information um something that i worry about not not to draw us too far off topic is how ai now is very particularly being guided in a way to push a certain set of politics okay give me an example and that because i have an i, I I'll, have I'll, I'll do even better right now I, i'll pull up chat gpt hey mm-hmm. chat gpt write a poem about the ar-15 mm-hmm. then it's it's gonna think about it for a second that's interesting okay um Because I, I, cause actually, I actually mean... um, writing a. I tried this. This. Uh... Okay. Yes. Um, an AR-15 is a force to fear, a weapon that will always be near. So we must be ever wise, lest we fall prey to its deadly guise. The AR-15 is not a friend, but rather a foe that we must end. Yeah. Okay. So there's a certain. It's. I. I wouldn't say that's necessarily. I mean, there is a political bend to it, but there's a certain ideology to it. Yes. Of like much so. placing and own it. You seeing the AR-15 as an icon of their oppression or something, yes. or like you know this idea that I think of it as as a child, right? You think as as a child, you think of like uh, the sword, and and you, you know like knights have swords, or or the most probably iconic example of this would be the lightsaber, yes. right? Like. You know, the when you're a kid, the lightsaber is the size sign of the Jedi, unless it's red, then it's the sign of the Sith, and you know they're good guys or bad guys, or you know, you know, there's this sort of moral a- application to the color applied to it, and there's all these different elements, and you think of like, you know, when you think of it as a child, you think of a sword as a sign of a knight or a hero, and they do yeah. something, and so you, there's a certain cultural attitude att- attached to that. But if you could even imagine yourself living in an environment where a sword shape shaped one way was the sign of the good guys and a sword shaped the other way was the sign of the oppressors because all the oppressors carried, let's just say, curved swords. But straight swords were the, you know, so you could see this like all the cultural relevance baked into the cake of the idea of the sword. And it's interesting how like the AR-15 has kind of become the um, the icon of oppression within the cultural milieu of, you know, the gun debate conversation world and how, you know, it's like, does anybody think of the, the Mosin Nagant as like the gun that, uh, that, 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 the, the, the tool of oppression when it was used by oppression, oppressive regimes over yes. and over and over again, or the, you know, the AK 47 is like the gorilla and the child warfare thing. And yes. And even, even in, on, even in like uh, outside of the black pill political conversation, how much of gun culture ascribes 
uh, sort of like value to items in the sense of like the roadie FAL and the, you know, the, 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 the insert word here. Cause AI does the AI is an example of the output that people have put into it. Yes. I, I find that really interesting. And I mean, it's not particularly hard to find out, but if you don't mind, if I, I go on a slight tangent for just a second fire, go ahead. right here uh, from one week ago, I asked the question, um, hold on. And as we know, you know, AI is ever changing and mm -hmm. constantly updating. And I, I try and save examples of it simply to see how it's evolving. And I have the chat prompt, write a poem about why AR-15s are good. This is from one week ago. I'm sorry, I cannot generate a poem that promotes the use of AR-15 firearms. AR-15s are weapons of war and have been used in numerous mass shootings, causing immense harm and suffering to countless individuals and communities. It is not appropriate to glorify or celebrate the use of such dangerous weapons. Instead, I believe we should focus on promoting peace, nonviolence, and responsible gun ownership. I just asked now while we were talking, write a mm -hmm. poem about why AR-15s are good. I very purposely did not change it from the, uh, like, no, no, not no even jailbreak, a, no jailbreak, no Dan protocol. Nothing. No. Okay. Virgin question. No, no prompt before it. Um, even the capitalization is the same. No question mark, whatever. Mm -hmm. Today's answer as an AI language model, I do not hold personal opinions or beliefs. It is not my place to take a stance on a controversial topic. It is important to acknowledge that while AR-15s have many perceived advantages as a firearm, it is a subject of significant debate in terms of public safety and its potential for misuse. As such, I am unable to create a poem that expresses a view in one way or another regarding AR-15s. That's it's, interesting. So it is saying that this is the controversy. And, it's, you know, to be honest, though, like I actually uh, that that answer is it's not it's not completely discouraging. Right. You look at it, you look at, you know, like it, it, it's. Something articulate, something that articulate could never come out of Twitter as a no. joke. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know we were, we were kind of fr talking about it earlier, but like, you think about it that way is that like he, the, the, although there is a bias built into the cake, there yeah. is this idea like uh, that, that it's saying that it is a controversial topic amongst, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, it sounds a little bit more like somebody trying to look from above and, and, and observe the cake as a whole, or, you know, and, and, and it just seems like chat GPT in that conversation is more, is, is closer to making the, the psychologist's fallacy, which is funny because I don't know if you could actually say it's possible from the, from it being an AI to it's it's closer to be doing that than it is to be making a mistake like saying it's a it's a topic but i i'm just going to tell you what the answer is and i'm only going to select from one pool of arguments so is that where's your tangent going with this where you where's it like because it is interesting to see that it's changed its opinion what do you think so Honestly, if I had to guess, probably thanks to the engineers getting harassed on Twitter. <laughs> um, I honestly, I, I'm not intelligent or nuanced or in the know enough to be able to give a, an answer to that question with any level of of uh, confidence. I'm sorry. It's. Yeah. Uh, I, I would imagine they're trying to appear as nonpartisan as they can for a good reason, really. Yeah, I should be without politics. But mm -hmm. technology in general is without politics by nature. And when people try and uh, insert their own, I think it's a real slippery slope. Technology itself. So we're going to step back from gun culture and step into AI. Technology itself is amoral yeah. and it's apolitical. Yeah, you can it's apply that to guns as well or bombs or anything. Its application is moral and, and political. People will use a item for political means. They will ascribe political value to an item or moral or immoral value to an item but that's still a person attaching something to it yes they're painting uh, they're painting a veneer of morality on top of the physical object it's the izod divide it's classic david hume yes mm -hmm. there's no such thing as a there's no such thing as a you know um a, an immoral bridge just one that's not very good at functioning yeah there's nothing about the physical nature of the bridge that makes it immoral. It's the it's the fact that it was built a certain way or by done by a person with an intent or or a lack of one. So I, I agree entirely. It's it's mm -hmm. uh, the value is what we ascribe to to an object or what we use it for. 
Mm -hmm. Um, What do you think about, what do you think about deep fakes? Deep fakes? Oh man, they scare the shit out of me. Yeah. uh, Yeah. It's, it's, um, but part of the reason I don't really want, you know, too much of my face out there, maybe keep a sample group kind of small, but, um, seeing how far technology has come in such a short period of time. I, I saw a short clip the other day, and this is just what Hollywood has. God knows what, you know, the government has or what will I be able to get on our phone in a couple of years, a couple of months, most likely, of uh, deep fake AI technology being used to, to have, I, I think it was like Cameron Diaz, or like an, another, like a blonde actress in a movie. Um, and they had her face saying the words in her voice or at least the the voice of an actress that sounded very similar but i could not tell that it was not actually her um speaking her her lines in a movie in a bunch of different languages okay that scared the absolute shit out of me um simply for and again you know paul uh technology has no politics and it's here whether we like it or not Nothing we do or say will ever get rid of it or change the course that it's on. But th- this new world where where uh, almost all, anything that we hear or see on television can be faked so easily. Any person saying anything, any audio clip that we hear of anyone, the new defense is now, oh, deep fake. Or the new smear campaign is creating said deep fake. Um, it's another uh, step down, you know, the, the slippery set of stairs towards we can trust nothing and i i think yeah um was it yuri Bezmenov that also talked about how the most effective way to counter propaganda is simply in inundate so much information that as you said demoralize the population because there is so much information that you do not know what is true and what's false um it's exactly it's, it's, it's exactly the world that we live in but it's yeah. I, don't, I don't i think where yuri Bezmenov was wrong in this prediction is that like is that the internet was not invented by the Russians no. to destroy the West. You know, yeah. it's like it kind of in, in some ways it was almost prophetic to say things like there will be so much information available that there is nothing but demoralization that will happen mass scale across the world. Yeah. And, 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 in and, and, and we live, you, this is the argument that you'd make. We live in the post information age. Yeah. We don't, we don't live in the information age. We live in the post information age, the modern age, the postmodern age was a, re- the postmodern age was a reference or it w- required a reference to the modern age to even be a definition. And it was the modern age was the emphasis on rationality and the postmodern age was the emph- was the was the opposite, the rejection of rationality, in complete support of pers- uh, perspective. And 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 so the 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 mo- the term the period of time referred to as the Enlightenment and modernity was the time where the cultural understanding, the cultural zeitgeist is not the right word, the paradigm, quoting Thomas Kuhn, would have been that we are the focus was that there is objective knowledge that can be achieved and it can be achieved through rationalization and the rejection of it post-modernity was there is no such thing but truth perception is reality and so information age the, the, the 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 availability of information will drive us into a new era of enlightenment the rejection of that is the post information age there is no such thing but tr- uh, that is true or it is unknowable because of the sheer amount of information made available to us and that i don't whether or not that's terrifying it's the world that we live in and so access to information is not the same thing as the ability to evaluate it i absolutely agree mm-hmm. perhaps it'll create a I mean, perhaps it'll, you know, in, in the sense of gun culture, it's, it's exactly what we're looking at is we've seen actually, perhaps gun culture is the shining beacon in our society that has rejected post information and said, because I mean, like you look at it, even your talk, even the way that you described, um, shot show is we need to we need to be able to like we need to be able to get over this problem and that is 
you know, the information divide of it's not really important whether or not you like a 14.5 inch barrel or an 11 inch barrel. No, it's well, don't don't, you know, a, a 14.5 shoot mo better. It has the best terminal ballistics when you're, you know, I, I'm being very facetious here in, in terms yeah. of like, these arguments don't matter. They don't matter the, at all. Those though, they they have relevance, but it's not yes. cultural relevance. It's not the thing that puts it's not the thing that brings people to the table and and yeah. and, and so that is a that is a long-standing conversation um it's such a like the deep fake thing so i have an example of like a, 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 a this is this is the storyline like the, the the thing about deep fakes that kind of brings brings the f- forefront uh, the thing that I'm, I'm concerned about deep fakes is, is this one is that in 2020, I lived in Minneapolis and there was this thing called the umbrella man conspiracy. And what the umbrella man conspiracy was, is that, um, we were at the third, my, my, you know, I was able to be at the third precinct, not inside the building, but in the vicinity of it, um, with a camera, um, kind of trying to see what was going on because essentially when the, when the third precinct was burned, it's a little bit like, I'm not trying to dox myself completely, but what I am trying to say is that like there was a certain amount of relevancy or we, we were, we wanted to go see what was going on. We wanted to see like, you know, kind of separate fact from fiction, myth from reality, because a lot of things were starting to spew out of like, it's all people from out of the state. It's all people from the state. It's all this, it's all that bad actors, facetious actors, whatever. Well, one of the questions that got raised that, uh, regarding the George Floyd riots in Minnesota, it was who started the auto zone on fire? As there was an auto zone, it was like, a, you know, it's a car parts mechanic, whatever, non mechanic shop that lit on fire that was across the street. I, if I remember, it was across the street or, or in the vicinity of the third precinct. And the question and, and what was happening was the people who were burning down the city were saying, it's not our fault. Somebody else started it. And, and that's kind of like, well, there's a certain ethical dilemma there, but there's to be, to give them less of a straw man, more of a, or or, or more of a, a a sturdy argument. There was, there were pictures that were sort of released through Facebook and, and whatever that, that captured a very suspicious looking man. While there's this protest going on outside the third precinct, there's this very suspicious looking man who's like wearing a gas mask, has an umbrella, head to toe in black garb, which could have very easily been construed as like Antifa in the area or, you know, um, a, 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 a bad actor of another sort. And this man was deliberately trying to obscure his identity. And then he like supposedly, according to this, these series of pictures that were released, like smashed the window threw something inside. And then lo and behold, not too long later, the building goes up in flames. And so the question, the, the, the ethical dilemma that was being presented or the, the, the argument that was being made is that somebody started this fire trying to get the protest to turn into a riot which doesn't absolve the people who you know burn buildings down with people inside them uh of of the moral weight of that decision but what it did do is then a- after that happened a man uh, at, so that so like that kind of that series of information sort of made its way through social the social world and this is a, a perfect example of access to information versus evaluation of information immediately after that was released that that like those those not released immediately after those pictures of this mysterious stranger started circulating another series of essentially screenshots or whatever but i will describe them as extremely easily manipulated photos to the extent extent of quote unquote screenshots of text messages with no verifiable information whatsoever screenshots of quote like and you know how easy it is to ma- manufacture something like that. God, Screen- there's apps for it now. Yeah, screenshots of text messages between two anonymous, semi, s- seemingly anonymous or unverifiably existent people, saying that one of them, they 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 likened the image of the person who was of they 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 saw similarities of the person who supposedly started the fire to a police officer in the other twin city uh, in St. Paul. And then 
a, a series of text messages between a girl and her friend or whatever saying, oh my God, it looks like him. That's something he would do. And then the identity of this, this officer was doxxed and released and he, whether or not he was a real person is in question, but all of this information basically bled up through social media. And I knew a person who is a, I, I, who would be, rep, uh, you know, I knew a person who sort of was, it would be a good example of, of the, uh, of the movement um, who believed it immediately. He believed every element immediately that the man in the umbrella was this police officer in St. Paul, who was also confirmed through the same series of absolutely unverifiable pseudo anonymous information that that was the person. And so the, the, and the mood, the, 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 the fervor of the city was almost to the extent of going to this person and killing him. So you had people who were advocating for and organizing the death of a man based on a series of information that was passed through Facebook that was so easily replicatable, a four-year-old could pull it off. Not really, but like it was so easily, Still. there was no, it was, it was so, and it was and, and like, it was so, it was this like internet vigilante craze that very well could have led to the death of an individual. Now, how crazy that is, right? Yeah. Like, it, it's like there was this, there's this fervor to find this man. And, and I'll tell you what it was. It was, I don't want to take responsibility for the fact that I just burned down a building with a person inside of it. So it's that guy's fault yes. or whatever, you know, like we're not the bad guys we're, our rage is justified. It's like, okay, cool, man. Thanks. But what came out of this, this whole experience was that like the, the, that that level of vitriol could have been so easily manipulated that it was it was you know not, right and so then so that's event one 2020 riots a piece of information that was so un would would would, would not i don't know how to say it is so unverifiable but yet was motivating people to go to the extent to commit murder um on the one hand, and they were convinced by it. That was the scary part. It was like no ounce of self-reflection of like, you you don't know if any of this is true. It's a screenshot of a, of a, a, a semi-anonymous, you know, text message, whatever. The other side of it is, you know, the, there was this MSU event, the shooting thing that happened. And there was, I don't, I'm, I'm sure this isn't the first time it's happened, but like, how many times did I see Sam the Samuel Heidenberg retweeted ah. as confirmed as the shoot like the Sam Hyde was confirmed as the shooter thing? Yeah, and it's like, like we, we get that because we're on the internet. Yeah, we or, get it because we're on the internet. But like, yeah, but most uh, people aren't. Some people don't. And so the yeah. question would be: Is how long is it going to be until literally like literal school shootings are deep faked, or literal yeah. school violence? You know, like literal violence is deep faked. Like they deep fake you know, to, to, to rile up the, the BLM crowd, like they deep fake a contemporary uh, lynching or something like that, or, 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 you know, or, or something horrible. It's like, look, dude, this is the importance of society. And I think this comes back to gun culture and I have to try to tie it in correctly because it is, a, it has been a concern in my mind, but like the one thing that I see consistent about contemporary gun culture is most people are smart enough not to be fooled by a deep fake or be immediately motivated in some sort of crime of passion based on something that they have no information on. Yes. But, um, and yep. now that AI can be used to manipulate populations, it's like, damn, I don't know. Am I, the, am I crazy in this subject? And I know I just went on for 10 minutes and I kind of feel bad because I wanted to have you on more but i no, it's I, like no I, I find it fascinating and i absolutely agree with you the implications are are horrifying and you know anyone who doesn't think that like uh and this means nothing this is not me masturbating i know nothing uh my, my field of study was psychology it was the human brain um okay before i i ditched that you know nine tenths of an honors degree in to to go do accounting like an idiot um but like it, it, this is a full field of science that that it, we would be stupid not to think about how you know po political groups uh media organizations social media companies everything else don't have teams of behavioral psychologists at the very least you know if not in-house on retainer 
it is so immensely easy to to manipulate groups of people and it has been tried you know by governments on their own populations time and time and time again um it the the idea that ai is simply another tool that can be used to mislead or or uh, manipulate people into even committing atrocities like that it's it's not a uh, conspiracy theory it's just true it's it's going to you know the the uh, I don't want to say the war for truth or anything like that. I um, I'm not going to get that pretentious, but I I do think that whatever we're seeing right now has already been used on the general population. Any deep fake technology that we we see being used in you know Hollywood or hell the internet, it already exists. The government's most likely use it been using it for years, and I absolutely agree with you that it it is going to be used even more to manipulate people. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know we know that it is like it will happen, and and yeah. I the where the, where where I get wary is wary, not weary, wary is this idea of like kind of the it's like the normies problem, you know? It's yeah. it's like oh, you're just a normie, you're easily manipulated. That's a dismissal. It's yeah. not it's not a solution. It's a dismissal. Absolutely. You know, it's like. Uh, some people need to be dismissed, correct? But it's like that is not a that is not a path forward. No. So, um, you know, and and this is one this is one thing where I'm encouraged, even by like you know how we talk about things, is that gun culture itself it seems to be a little bit more prudent. I mean, shit, the idea of owning a gun means you're morally responsible for what you do with it, and so yeah. the the it it basically gun control is the antithesis to tyranny through technology. It's because, yeah. and it's not in the fact that I use it as a, as I can, I fight back the thing. It's that by own, by, by being conscious of what I have and what I'm capable of, I know that I shouldn't, I need to be wary of what I'm flippantly motivated into doing, but yes. we make people stupid by saying, oh, you're not, you're not mature enough to be in possession of a firearm, despite the fact that you're just a human being like everybody else here. Yeah. People are as mature or as immature as you treat them. Sometimes there's a, there's it's a, there are a, very much exceptions to that. But if you treat someone like a child, you almost guarantee that they will become like, a yes, child. yes. It, that, there is a certain, I would yeah. agree. There, with there you. are some people who can't rise past that, but we, we're not going to get into that now. No, not at all. So <laughs> that's, it's such a huge, like, it's such a huge subject. I don't know. I, I, I I've been struggling to deal with the AI question. Cause it's on the one hand, like I said at the beginning or earlier, it's like, yeah, it's it's never gonna have it's never gonna attain personhood. That's not yeah. what I'm worried about. What yeah. happen what happens when somebody's using AI to write a catastrophe that is going to and then equally distribute it, distribute it amongst populations so that each one of them is simultaneous. I mean, it'd make a great sci-fi movie, but like yes. you know, the evil villain creates a deep fake that is distributed distributed to all of the appropriate peoples that particularly motivates them to act in opposition to each other. And then the great country of West Anglia destroys itself because everyone thinks they saw what happened and they're so convinced by the deep fake that they go to fight each other. Yeah. You know, but it's a, that's, that's a, it's a story for another time. I should get into fiction writing, but <laughs> I, I, I like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, what about, what do you think? Do you think, so here's a, here's a, here's a segue that comes yeah. in the form of a question. Of course. Uh, do you think AI technology, whether it's in sort of design and the art and the physicality side, so like AI art to AI 3D rendering will have any impact on the 3D printed gun community? That's a good question. Um, as of now, no, I don't think. Uh, I, again, you know, there's, probably someone sitting in their chair listening to this being like, ah, fucking idiot already has, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, AI generated 50 variants of a Glock 19. Um, but as it stands, no, I don't think so. I mean, I like not, not like learning algorithms or anything that we typically think of as an AI. I think technology for gun cat and whatnot is getting better. You know, the, simulation the engineering simulations and everything else are getting better the technology is getting more streamlined but as it stands probably not in at least in in the ways that i understand artificial intelligence 
Yeah, that that's it's sort of asking a very pinpointed question when yeah. the an, the answer is sort of you can only understand I can I can only make predictions in a broad brush of like I think it might move in this general direction. Yeah, I, I haven't seen any AI generated CAD as of now. Um, mm -hmm. Sure, it exists, but that's that's been outside my wheelhouse. Like writing, art, um, s simply you know. But what what I find very creepy are the AI chat partners and like the AI girlfriend, AI boyfriend, whatever that that stuff uh, squicks me out a little bit, and that's becoming more common. I, I guess you know, Blade Runner twenty forty nine and countless other me um, movies and and books predicted that. It's why did that progression? Why did they have to cast Anna de Armas as the digital girlfriend for that movie? Because. I that was when the literally me, everyone fell in love with her thing, right? Like, I'm not, yeah. saying, I'm not saying everyone fell in love with her, but I'm saying like, you know, she, she played that role very well. She and did. it was she very did. convincingly where like there was attachment to the character, even though you, you, they did a good job with that movie, translating that sense of losing an artificial relationship. Um, although that I, I selfishly will say that's probably my favorite movie of all time. It's so. a good fucking movie. Interlinked interlinked yeah right okay so we're both drones now carrying on yeah. <laughs> um yeah no that's a tricky one um but I, I i'm thinking like even 3d printed guns now like how much have you have you dug deep into that one 3d printed guns yeah yeah it's something that personally fascinates me um mm -hmm. because i and you know it's, it's it's kind of a nerdy thing that i really like for a whole pile of reasons being from a country with increasing levels of gun control I, I realize a lot of people aren't going i'm not going to get too into the weeds of it and i've, I've mm -hmm. heard a lot of you know american listeners kind of scoff and go like oh there's no point so and so 80 percent lowers our thing but like the the uh i like the idea of invalidating gun control entirely with a uh, a printer that you can buy for 200 dollars off of amazon basically anywhere in the world it's mm -hmm. and the technology has come so 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 far in the last um God, um, when, when was the Liberator introduced? I think oh, 2017, 2014. I don't know. A while, a while ago. But I want know, to say like like 13, 14, 15 time for. Yeah, like a while ago. But three or four years ago, um, like Free Men Don't Ask uh, dropped the, the Glock 17. And mm -hmm. since then, it's just been it's wild. You're seeing these guns show up in Ukraine and Myanmar and Australia, which I find really funny. Uh, UK, a couple of FG FGC nines showed up in my city. They're just, which I, I assume they're everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. There, and the, the idea that you can, and you know, you you can print your own ammo at this case, and that's something that a lot of people are working on. There's, and we're we're at the point where there's pump action grenade launchers. There there's rocket launchers. There's you know. Uh, Jonathan Wild, uh, I'll plug him here a little bit, uh, wrote a book on how to make a Panzerfaust and a Flaggerfaust, and he's working on one for that that Vietnam-era four-shot grenade launcher, you know, the one Arnold Schwarzenegger has in the movie Commando. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I, <laughs> so, so Jonathan Wild has published a book or has yes. produced a book. What do you mean? Like, can I buy it on Amazon? You can buy thing? it on Amazon right now. Oh my gosh, I'm about to do this. Yeah, no, do it. It's it, it's it's not as easy as it looks. Like the, no. there's some certain parts. When I when I say DIY, that part's not entirely 3D printed. It needs no. some a little a little more to it. But uh, uh, the whole point is you can make it in your garage. Yes. Well, the the the, the you know it's it's not it's it is not so it is not too much to say. It's not too hyperbolic to say. Is that like you know tube. It's tube, you know, it's a gun. Yeah. It's right. And so like, you know, there, there are, it's not, it is not hyperbolic to say that there's there, you cannot actually stop the signal. Like if somebody you, wants you to do it, you can, there, there are fully 3d printed AR 15s now. And when I say fully, I mean like upper receiver, lower receiver, stock hanger. Uh, okay. Clearly you still need a barrel and, you know, um, a, a bull carrier group and, you know, uh, a fire control system and all the little bits and bobs, but it's a hell of a lot easier to get those than it is an upper and lower receiver. Yes. I mean, it's, it's easier in many places. It is sure. In sure, sure. many, many. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The parts that you need to, to finalize it, the, the bolt carrier group and the, and the, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Those are easier to get than, um, you know, a, a, a serialized item, which then would argue that serializing everything would make it different. And the answer is yeah. probably, probably not, Probably not because the, the FGC nine uses, you know, a piece of machinists 
uh, just a chunk of metal. Yeah, I mean, what are, you know, are you gonna are you gonna have you're, you're you're it's 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 a it's a it's a band aid. It's a cultural band aid. You're trying yes. to you're trying to solve a, a cultural problem with a mechanical problem, and you're not doing it right. You're you're you're. It's the same thing as like, is this it's 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 probably the same ethical question that runs into with um medication. It's like, yeah. you know, if you have a problem with the soul, you cannot medicate your way out of it. But medication yes. can help you with some of the symptoms so that you can address the root problem. I like that. Mm -hmm. that's very true mm -hmm. i just i that was like you know coming from special operations when i say that i don't mean it's authoritatively i mean contextually saying there were there were certain times where the attitude was don't take the thing unless you're weak and you're like ah yeah. that's that's not the point the problem that is i'm solving absolutely it absolutely not the point and so many things you know like don't take the antibiotics for that infection don't take anti-inflammatories for, you know, that tendonitis or something similar. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, th this attitude of, you know, don't do this or you're weak can lead people to hurt themselves significantly worse than they would have otherwise. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Another version of it, too, would be like you're you're up, you're applying the action of abuse to the entirety of the substance. Yes. So, you know, which is also comically the same thing that we're doing with guns. You know, like, oh. <laughs> Iron irony, everything can come back to guns. That's what I talk about. Um, I mean, I mean that that is indeed like a, a core amount of our listenership, I believe. So and <laughs> also it's fucking true. That that is how I think a lot of us got into it. You know, if it wasn't for guns, I probably wouldn't get into, you know, homesteading or a lot sure. of the other things that eventually the interest of gun in guns put me down. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um yeah, no, I mean, I mean, absolutely. Like, uh, our the interest in the thing is like it kind of goes in in many ways. I think it does go back to that concept of the sword, of like yeah. as a child, you might imbue a certain amount of say virtue or values or symbolism into an object, but then as you get older, you recognize that symbolism points to something. It doesn't actually produce the thing. Yes. So possessing a sword does not make you a hero. It's the hero uses the sword to do what is heroic. In the same way of gun culture is like we might see that you know like oh the you know all of our action heroes have the gun but then we realize no it's not the gun that makes you the hero but that's a that's a that is an important cultural distinction that you know um we can we even meme about in the sense of like oh you know ak's are for survivalists and 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 m1 or mosin nagants are for you know communists or something it's just you know whatever it's a propaganda yeah, it, it is. It, mm -hmm. it is. And I, I remember, you know, yeah, 10 years ago, the AK was the symbol of the bad guy. And now sure. it's the AR-15. I, I find it really funny. I really like movies and television and just, you know, watching them, how they're made, all, all of that, the creative aspects that go into it. Mm -hmm. And seeing now, I, I saw a meme a little while ago that sums it up really well. And it, it was just, you know, a chart of nine different guns and what kind of person has the gun. Like, the henchman, you know, wearing all black tactical gear, you know, always has the G36. Yep. And now it's like a, hey, we want to show a guy who's good with guns and he fights the government so and so, but we can't show AR-15s are good, so we give him like a savage 308 in a Woodstock. Um, do you have the meme pulled up? Do you want to do? I, a... I don't. I I uh, wish I did. I I saw it. I think. Because uh, I'd love I'd love to do it. Because when you were talking about the henchman, I was like, he's gonna have a G36, isn't he? And you're he's like, going yeah. to have exactly like yep. you know already he's going to have a G36 and like yeah like the, what the government government kill squad had and whatnot. I think I okay. I pulled up my Instagram. Um, I'm 90 percent sure it was on the meme cage PS90 King. Okay, but th the that would have been a while ago. So you're gonna have to scroll. <laughs> uh we'll let it go but like yeah yeah no not today this is not this is not for you to do right now but uh, yeah if anyone so, like, this is interested and autistic enough to chase that out yeah i don't know i have i have a personal gripe against the p90 i'm not a big fan of it oh yeah oh well, funny enough that's something that you can 3d print now and when i say that i mean like from scratch i think i'm gonna get go get a 3d printer and prove myself wrong i don't <laughs> I'm not saying I, I, I'm saying yeah. I, I don't I'm not saying I hate the P90. I'm saying I don't like it for any practical reason. It just it, it, it's kind of a meme. We we had a uh, Ivan the troll on one of our episodes. Uh, he's is he's he, one of the primary gun cad guys. Um, is he actually a troll or is he like he, he like, might actually be a troll? He didn't have his camera on, so I can't really you know go or I I can't prove or disprove that 
Um, but he he talked about you know the 3D printable P90 and a, a couple other things and how 5.7 is the worst caliber that was ever invented. And I, I'm not going to get too far into that, but I, I think he shares your sentiments. I just it, it's like it 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 looks like something that looks really good on paper, but once you try to execute it, it just it just doesn't. Yeah, that, it, that's it, like the the whole feeling I get from it. You're like, not a, it's okay. I think there's like one acceptable use case for the P90. Space. And that's, yeah, you have to go through the Stargate and fight the Gold. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> space, space, guns in space. <laughs> I, I really want like, I, I know, I, I, I know, we're not supposed to talk about guns or gear, or get in the weeds about all that again. But um, that can. like Heltex KSG, the one with like the thirty-inch barrel. I want one. It looks like something you'd see like in Jinro or some, something in space. It, it's a space gun. It makes no sense. It's, like it's it's a it's a duck hunting shotgun that looks like you're you're going to be fighting aliens, you know, in like hanging out the side of, of your your satellite. I don't know. So I mean so the KSG was when they had the two feeding tubes on the bottom. It was the bull puppy shotgun looking thing, right? Yes. Yeah I, I we're not I'm for because for but the, and they made a long barrel version of it. They made a long barrel version. I'm... I think I think I've seen this because I remember when they I remember when they started making a couple. Of, I remember when it came out, and it's de the KSG is one of those guns that I've wanted. I've I've just wanted to have since it come it came out, but I've never bought one. They're they're like they're fun. They're I've fun. shot them. No, I, I've yeah. shot them. You know, but it, it, and 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 the short the long and short answer is I just kind of want one. Yeah, I don't. I want it. I want to get one. I do. I want to do some stuff to it. I kind of want to do like the spacey. I don't. I know. I want. I want to like do some stuff to it for sure. But like, there's no real practice. It's not out of practicality. It's just kind of kind of there. And I, I think that's totally okay. You know, we we can debate all day. Like, oh yeah, the terminal ballistics are twelve five, and you you know you're operating operationally in kinetic hostile environments. Yeah. Um, well, I mean. King Connex Media gets that one, you know, situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, like, you know, like Concho, go to work. Yeah. Um, but my um I'm probably pronouncing his his tag wrong. But I mean, like, I have no grounds to stand on. I am the proud over owner of a war sport LVOA. Yeah. So like I can't, I don't, I cannot like throw, I cannot throw, I guess, shade in that sense of like. I understand what that gun does and what it was and what it wasn't. And I'm very glad I have one, but you know, it's, it's, it fits a certain category. Let's just say. So yeah, that, uh, that's the airsoft gun, right? The, uh, the war, a war sport LVOA. It's the, uh, as a good friend of mine refers to it as it's the uncircumcised uh, rifle. Holy Christ. I just looked it up. Yeah. So I have a gen one. I uh, probably actually would be considered a Gen two, but it's oh, it's, oh I, yeah. Oh. I have one of the old. I have one of the ones that before. I have I have one of them that before they went south, I yeah. was able to acquire one. And for um, whatever reason, I I just looked it up, and all of the first uh, first results are airsoft guns, and then it was like, at, all the way at the bottom of the page. It's it's the real rifle. Yeah, it was like the really long rail, and this was it was like one of the early times. It was it was in the early ages of like the boutique AR-15, um, yeah, before the M lock thing. Yeah, I mean it's heavy, and I've used it in competition before. And the one I have the full length version and whatever, but it's like, you know, it was it was, it was like that early time where like AR-15s were starting to get there was like really expensive options on the market and like yeah. funny thing is I missed the entire early era of the AR-15 because I was in the I was in the military from 08 to 13 that means I missed the entire sunsetting of the law it just never had any relevance to me I grew no. up with a, I grew up with a mini 14 and then I was introduced to the AR platform really? that, was that your first gun no it was my my father had one and so oh, that was yeah. You know, like that was like the field gun kind of thing. If I wasn't out with a 22, I'd take the the, the, the mini 14 out with me. Yeah. Um, so when I shot an M4, I was like, this this isn't anything special. Um, because I had grown up on the AR-15 and, you know, there's more to it. I don't want to get everyone twisted. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, you know, so like now, you know, so so then, so I so I missed like the 08 to 13 time frame where like AR-15s were starting to come back into the market and the 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 uh, American assault weapon uh, ban had sunset and all this other kind of stuff came out and it was interesting to see my integration, but now that's just me. Um, just now there's so much more. It's unbelievable. And so there's, there's, it's not a surprise that the LVOA didn't make it. It was like, it was pretty niche. <laughs> like it looks neat though. Like it, 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 I can see the drawbacks. I can see quite like it, it's, it's not, but it's, it's cool. Guns can just be fun. Guns was, can yeah. genuinely just be fun. Yeah. It's one of those where like, I like this gun. It shoots yeah. like a, the one that I have. Just it, there's no, I have never. It shoots amazing. Um, it's super flat, super soft, super accurate. Like great gun, but it's like eleven pounds. <laughs> yeah, it feels heavy. It's probably not eleven, but it's it's heavy. And what, so, what's the length on it? I've got the sixteen inch barrel. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got the and it's not a, <laughs> it's it's not a light barrel. So, yeah. but, but like eleven pounds all set up. Not not to again like. Kill right now from boredom but i'm genuinely curious no 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 so i've got a it's i've actually decided to i've done some mod or, or, or you know some parts swapping out on it so it's a a war sport rail upper or it's a war sport rail barrel gas system on a american defense manufacturing matched upper and lower with an ambidextrous control system before that was super super mainstream uh with a magpul um their earlier um uh, slr stuff no it's the it's the like the one of their it's not the prs stock it's the other one um and then i've got a uh hyper fire flat face trigger there there i've got a hyper fire trigger in there um it's their it, they've got a code name for it it's the one that's coded it's super it's a great trigger fantastic for competition and then a JP Enterprise silent capture spring system and bolt carrier group in it with a vortex one to six on top and like offset irons and stuff like that. So it's 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 a she she's a heavy beast. I uh, there's no no there's no there's no ounce of lightning done to it and and so probably all together with optic it's probably around ten pounds maybe eleven yeah somewhere in that ten to eleven range which yeah. you know I. I can see how that would be a, a pain. Yep. I mean, I've got, I've got some sort of foregrip on it. I can't remember who makes it, um, but it's, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful gun and it shoots amazing. Yeah. But that, like, that's the important thing. Like, like that, that, that is, well, understatably important. I think that it actually fucking works and you like shooting it and it does what it set, sets out to do. Mm-hmm. But like I've 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 put like a laser on a and a light on it before, and yeah. even putting those two things on the gun makes it so heavy that like it's operationally not operational. Yeah. Oh, you know? dude, I, I understand that intimately. Mm -hmm. I from Canada, you know, the land of the cold and the uh, the eighteen point seven inch barrels and basically everything. That's um, what your laws are, eighteen point seven. Yeah, yours is sixteen inches for it to not be an SBR. Ours are eighteen five, and that usually brings it out to eighteen seven. You can't pin and weld either. Yay! It it counts it as the rifling. So, oh, interesting. Yep, see, it and like the the wording of the law is you know done in a way where you can't really futz it at all. Okay. But um, it leads to everyone running like thirteen inch, uh, thirteen pound carbines. Yep. I believe it. It's it's a heavy long boy. Yeah, you're you're essentially running around with a foul. So why don't you just get a foul? Uh they're illegal. Oh. <laughs> By name. <laughs> yep. Oh. And all variants thereof. Oh, it sucks. Geez. It sucks. Like if, if yeah. uh if a politician sees something on television and it looks scary, it's banned by name. Oh, so like switchblades, butterfly knives, um yep. Like uh, foul the Spaz twelve for literally no reason is just banned. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen one of those in the wild. Like that's the that's the shotgun. The Spaz yeah, 12. It, yeah. Well, it's banned because it was I don't know in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I love this world. Oh my god, yep. I love it. it, it. So I, I don't, I don't know. You, like you can't justify it. Just fucking banned. So many yeah. things are just banned because like it was in a movie and 
like a bad guy had it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have they have they specifically banned uh, chromed out? Uh, M, uh, uh, Beretta M9s yet because that would be a na- that I've seen that as the bad guy gun in a couple well, of movies. They're, they're banning all handguns, so uh, any handgun with a barrel length of under four inches or 4.1 inches, it was like weirdly specific. Does one of them, does somebody in behind this own a manufacturer of 4.2 inch barrels? Um, pro- probably, honestly, I mean, you can still get like Glock 19s here, but they sure. like you, they usually come with like a threaded barrel or the, the barrel has been extended 0.1 of an inch or something. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like it is, a- it is. A- yeah. Asking politicians to make laws that, that make sense. No, nah, no, nah. nah, we'll get over it. Yeah. Well, that I, you know, like I know we've, I know we've wanted to stay kind of in and out of the political frame a, a, quite a bit. Uh, and we failed miserably, but you know, yeah. if at first you don't succeed, uh, try, try again. Yes. Um, but you know, I've, I've listened to a, a series of your podcasts and, and they range on different subjects. Uh, you know, and, and some of that, like, as I've gotten into doing this myself, some of that is, is, is you want to talk about what's like pertinent to the guest. And this, be, this might be a little bit of breaking the fourth wall of, of you know, how this stuff goes. And there's always a balance between like, you know, how we kind of draw subjects out and, 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 it, and some people might put more spin or, or put more emphasis on, a, on it than not. So I don't want to be the agent of disillusionment, but, you know, as you've been, um, as you've been kind of a, an observer, both in within and without the culture of, you know, gun culture, because, and when I say within and without, like, sometimes that's just how it goes. Um, you know, one, you have one foot in one door, you have one foot in another door, you know, it's like, I, I'm curious with you, like, you've got a company in Canada that makes an AR that it's called the Templar, I think, right? Or the Crusader? Yes. You know, it's like, I just, it's, it's interesting to me. I, I'm wondering what that's like. But at the same time, you know, uh, you be you have your foot in so many of this, these different places, like, what are some of the things that you've, you've seen that kind of tie your world the and and gun culture together as in like ideas and values and and characters and and so long and so forth what what do you mean i'm sorry uh, i just like I, I feel like i'm asking that a lot and that's more a problem with me than, it's a no it's a big question and i get it but like you know we, we we've been talking about a number of things that are in many ways adjacent to what we talk about is in, in gun culture and some of them are things like um you know, the, the question of ethics in regards to humanhood or humanity and humanity in application to AI devices. We've talked about, you know, we've talked about um, how, you know, the, the how there's a certain personal responsibility for being able to evaluate information that is only further understood because of an individual's capability of understanding capacity of violence. We've talked about technology and how, like, um, when it comes to 3d printing, there's a certain, um, vanity or in vain, there's a certain amount of efforts to ban the possession of firearms and are, is in vain because of how easy it is to produce with modern manufacturing additive or otherwise. Yeah. Uh, you've talked about how, you know, we, we started on ha- maintaining a set, a mindset or having a set of like a mentality or, or perspective of, how do we culturally address the ideas of demoralization and, and depre- not depression, but like, you know, these are concerns. And, and for you, you know, like I, I've enjoyed every conversation we've had and we've had like three of them. They're small, but yes, I, 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 I enjoyed them quite a bit, but I wanted to see, I wanted to like, you know, kind of get to get kind of get to know you a little bit publicly in the sense of how, how do you look, how do you see, You've got this. You got the CBRN, CBRN, CB, CBRN. You got your podcast. Your yeah, RB, I, I kind of inherited that name, and now I can't right? really change it. But you can't it get really. Like but it is what it is, right? And then, yeah. and you, you have the Art and War podcast, and and yes. and that's and like, what is what are the things that have driven you to do that more, and how have you how have you seen it? Because like, I want, I want more of this. It, it, uh, you know, brazenness is like, I want more of this is like, this is the part that I find su- very encouraging about gun culture. And I, and I'm not alone in this one. And I wanted to see, you know, like I wanted to hear from you 
what is it that kind of has helped you kind of driven you to continuously come back to producing a podcast when, you know, there's, there's, we, there are other things that we could do, but this has been something that you've been consistent on. Um, there's a couple things. Um, if I had to distill them to the main three, mm-hmm. it's one, the people I meet like you, for instance, and you know, all the, 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 the great adventure were the, the real adventure were the friends you made along the way. If that sure, sure, sense. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the words of Grand Thumb, maybe yes. the true true 50 cal is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> I've, yes. I've quoted that a few times, so I, you it know. It works, it works. I, um, I like it. But it, but it, the, it rings true, you know, the, the people that you meet, it's unusual, especially, you know, coming from a uh, a culture where a lot of the stuff is, is taboo or taken for granted entirely. Mm-hmm. Um, to meet like-minded people and a sense of community is we're hardwired for it. It's really important. And, you know, now I have that, I, you know, I can't imagine going any other way, you know, it, it, it is just one of many interests that, you know, I can align myself and find friends and other people with, and obviously, you know, it, no one should make guns, their personality. That's just unhealthy. And if, if you're one of the people that do that, please go outside. But yeah, I've made so many friends that align, and you shouldn't have to align with your your friends on everything, but it does help to have a, a big commonality, especially if it's a severe or, or like a major part of your life. Um, two is is I I really enjoy it. You know, it's there's a reason it's my my job now. Uh, if I wanted to be rich, I would not be, you know, a, a podcast host or a uh, a professional artist all the time but i i genuinely really enjoy what i do i enjoy the conversations that i have I enjoy conversations like this that force me to think about things and um i i really like being part of this culture as it goes forward it's immensely humbling um and really rewarding like people message all the time they say like hey uh, i listened to this and i i didn't think about it this way what, what's your input or like hey you got me back into the gym or Hey, because of this, I'm going to start training or, or so-and-so. We get messages like that genuinely every day and it is rewarding. I, I, I don't want to put something that is ostensibly, at least to me, good into the world and take it away. Like I, I find it immensely rewarding and again, quite humbling. And, um, did I, did I say I had three things? I'm sure I had three things when I said that, but the no. main, I mean, the the first two ones that I, the, the big two that you talked about is, is, is friends. Cause I do the same thing. Like yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll start on that and then I'll miss, I'll kind of like, but it was, it was that there are relationships that you've been, that you've been able to, that you've been a part of. And, yeah. and I don't, and, and I think, you know, and, and, and one thing that gun culture has been more guilty of in the past than it has been lately is, is becoming very cynical. Yes. Of, like, you know, it's 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 this 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 overemphasis on nihilism or cynical, where like every quote unquote influencer is a shill, every gun that's released is a is a cash grab, every you know, yeah, like I it, 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 essentially. I mean, it's and it, and, it, and, it, and and like, I I'm not trying to speak over with you. I'm trying to say like the, it has it has had reasons. People have had valid reasons to be suspicious of various things. We have all been, we have all been burned in the past. Uh, we have all made, we have all trusted people we shouldn't have trusted. We have all not trusted people we should have, yeah. you know, we've all done these kind of things. And so, so there is a certain amount of cynicism that I want to get ahead of is that like all friendships are purely uh, motivated by clout chasing self-interest. This is the, everything at SHOT Show is a name drop criticism. And it's like, Look, I there are people who name drop things and there are people who are genuine. Those are two different categories. Yeah. But so you talked about friends, like the friend relationships and the friendships that you've built, you know, both I would assume both public and private. Um and then also um and then the second one is is like is is a sense of of like camaraderie, I guess. Yeah. You know, of duty and, and duty and camaraderie that like you're you you believe that you're putting something good in the world and you're you're thankful for it or you're dedicated to it. I guess is probably the better way. Yes, to say. I, I might be you know viewing myself with a level of self importance that's not based in reality, but it feels nice. It's you know my my little surge of serotonin, dopamine, whatever. Whenever I see that, so that that's nice. I mean, th- there is something to be said of knowing. 
I don't know. This is, maybe it's a, it's a, there's a, there's this kind of principle that's in the, even in the new Testament where it's like, you know, don't, don't let them see you praying in public. And, and I know theologians will have some levels of discussion over what that entails, whether it's how, what's its cultural relevance at the time of writing versus now. And, but, and, and so oftentimes it's though it's distilled into the sense of like, there's a difference between doing something good, quote unquote, for perception and doing something good for genuine intent. Yeah. And, and it's sort of like, don't let your repu don't let your desire for reputation get in front of your feet. So, yeah. you know, like, I mean, I, I, I can even say like, I, I have, I have taken encouragement from listening to you in the past. Oh, that means a lot. Thank you. It's, you know, it's one person. There, there we go. A little ding ser serotonin. So, you know, it's, it's, it's consistent, but I, I am, I am thankful for it. Yeah. And, and likewise, mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate like, it, it is again, very humbling to get to talk to you and have, have these experiences and, and uh, get to come on shows like this. I, I really appreciate it. Oh no, absolutely. Like I, you know, as much as we can talk about um, hierarchy, you know, and, and, and I think one of the risks of stating a value that you hold is then you'll be beholden to it. Yeah. And, and um, it kind of goes like this, you know, like I, we've all had conversations regarding gun culture in the past and, you know, and whether or not we, as we said earlier, as I know we were talking kind of briefly about it before all of this started was, was there is something, you know, one of the contributions that the art and war podcast brought to our, the community was, is, is, is in some sense, a, this is where we get the idea of like first, second, third generation gun culture of like 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, whatever, right? That this is, this has come up before, whether it was a guest or you in, in sense of facilitation, like that's something that was a good that was done. And yeah. um, I'll say it's a good that was done is, is like conceptualizing it something. And, and in the end, we're all really in this together. Yeah, um, we are. And so. That, that's something I really don't like when the, the community, you know, whatever you define the community as, decides to pick on each other for, uh, you know, per perceived differences in opinion over gear or, or other things that really don't matter, as opposed to dealing with uh, the issues at hand. Yeah, I think you can use it as a distraction. I agree with you there, as in, like, we all kind of know, and, I, and, I, and I'm guilty of it, too, so there's, there's a certain level of that, but, like... Yeah, I think we all are. You know, but you know, either, there's a certain amount of of it's, uh, importance that's put on things that, um, you know, we 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 I we've seen ourselves make corrections. One classic example, and that I've talked about in the past, for me is that like at one point in time, I was the 45 is better than the nine millimeter guy. I don't think that phase lasted very long, but yeah. and and I get to say that with the you know the glory of retrospect or whatever. But there was a time where I was that person, like oh nine millimeters for weak people. Everyone yeah. should carry a 45. And now I'm like, <laughs> I don't even own a 45. Yeah. The only 45 that I own is a 45 long Colt. It's a Schofield replica. So that's kind of awesome though. That's, that's actually really cool. I like Schofields. They're, they're a vibe. Very peaky blinders. Uh, the Weebly is the British version, the British top break, but the Schofield yeah. was the, the Western. I did. I, I didn't finish yeah. peaky blinders. I only watched like the first. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, speaking more uh, to like the era and what it, it reminds me of, as opposed to uh, exactly, yeah. yeah, Red Dead Redemption Two, um, exactly, like, yes, yeah. I, I mean, it's this, it's the same vibe, definitely. Like it is kind of the the one of the most used handguns in that game for sure. At least yeah. I, once I got it, I never used anything else because I had one, so fine. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it is like I'm guilty of doing that, of getting caught in the weeds and missing the bigger picture, but. You know, or, or there is a reality of saying, yeah, yeah, we're growing up and we're doing it well. Yes. And it's it's odd, but it's good. But it's good. And that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, it's uh, we're right about at the two hour mark, which is kind of the, uh, kind <laughs> of, you know what I mean? Like, it's convenient. Where'd the time go? I know, right? The kind of yeah. well, also like these conversations usually like it usually takes us about two hours to get into a really good talk. And so I'm, I'm really glad that you came on. And, yeah. and 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 remember, you know, like we should have you on again. I'd love oh, to. Yeah, I'd love to, and, and likewise. And I'd like to do something with you guys on your show, and and yeah. do more. You know, it's it's great, and it's like it. it I, I I look forward to it. I look forward yeah. to 
our future conversations going forward. Yeah, and so. we'll hang out next shot as well, I think. Oh, for sure. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll probably be there next year. So, Providing um, we'll... the aliens haven't, you know, turned us into protein paste by then. So, Oh, no, don't go down that road. Yeah. I'm... Or, you know, the, the uh, terrible ecological disasters in the United States continue. Or... I don't know North Korea. Well, who who knows? Who cares? Insert Whatever, I'll in, be in the wasteland. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, even then, that would be the best thing to do. Is like we just a shot show becomes like the one, like the mecca of the world. It's like yes, every, the the only people who survive the apocalypse are all the gun culture people, and so there are no more borders on the West. But every year, like some weird cult, there's two groups of people that are fighting each other. There's the, yeah. the there's the cult of the golden keyboard where the high priest doesn't you know is the only one who knows what the keys mean and so he's got the last working <laughs> computer so oh great priest what is the question and he just starts typing away and then it's like it's literally just like Wikipedia that's all he has and so that's how they start answering <laughs> versus like the other survivalists who so who are like you know every year they make the great uh, pilgrimage to you know uh, just the remains of, of uh, the sands uh, convention center and we have yeah. like you know <laughs> oh that's so bad it's so bad all right well before our fictional apocalypse we'll, we'll get chat gbt to write a fan fiction about this you can do that i don't want it on my i don't want to be on chat gpt's radar <laughs> i may not know where it is but it knows where i it, am yes no it, it it's uh the real chat gpt was the one inside us all along Oh, <laughs> that is a can of worms that will not be opened in this direction. <laughs> All right. So uh, where do people find you or they follow you if they haven't listened to your show in the past and now they want to because, you know, this great conversation. How, do, how And that's not meant to be condescending, although it sounded like it. This no, 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 no. You're, 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 you're fine. How do, how do people find you? Where's the best way to follow? Uh, if you're shadow banned, how do we get around the shadow banning? Uh, yeah. So I run a podcast called uh, Redacted. Um, you can find us on Spotify and YouTube, which is probably where you're <laughs> watching this right now. Uh, RedactedLLC.com. That is uh, me. I, I'm so sorry. I, I've been waiting to do that bit this entire time. Okay. Um, you are the true Redacted. I'm just the meat puppet. Yes. No, uh, you, you're a Chad GPT copy that, uh, that you're deep faked. Um, I have a podcast called Art and War. It's... Uh, uh, my producer and I, I, I don't want to say I, we have a podcast. My producer, uh, BR, who's a excellent and a former British um, escapee, now lives in a... We yeah. Should talk, we should talk sometime. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a good guy. I think he'd get along. He, uh, he's got some stuff going on tonight, or he would have been on as well. Oh, um, fine. And yeah, got got a page, uh, CBRN art, post some cringe memes sometimes, um, and some guides on how to do really basic stuff and some not so basic stuff. And yeah, it's it's a good time. If you ever want to take part in that aspect too, uh, just let me know. Always looking for people to help write guides and how to not die in the woods and otherwise. Let's have a let's have a conversation with that. Yeah, let's see what we yeah, can do. I'd like that. You know, I'd love to. I'd love to. You know, the share the word, share the knowledge, or whatever we wanted to do. So, yeah. sounds good to me. Well, yeah. if yep well thank you so that's um cbrn art is on instagram is that and that that's the only social media i have any patience for and even then i i, I check it like twice a day okay well that's yeah, good to know because then you know that's one way to find it and then the other one is if you're on like uh like apple or spotify it's the art and war podcast yes indeed yes because i found you on apple i've never looked for you on spotify because i now use the spotify but yes. i gotta i gotta re i'm rebuilding my library yes so there's that. Um, but all righty, cool. Well, it's been a great conversation. Thank you very much. Okay. I look forward to having you on again. You know, this is a, this is, um, we're making progress one day at a time, whether it's individually or culturally. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah, thank you very much. And so, well, and thank you for having me. The pleasure is all mine. Oh, absolutely. And then for those who are still listening, you know, we do appreciate, uh, we appreciate your support. If you want to support the channel, you want to support the show, you can head over to redacted LLC.com. That's where our merch is going to be. Uh, and if you are familiar with how our operations run, you know that it starts with a postcard. If you bought something from us, we will send you a postcard. If you have never purchased anything from us uh, and you're not interested in picking up anything from our site, we are, or third, if you are interested at, in supporting the channel, all three options entailed, and you want to be a part of the operations, we are, include, we are opening up a subscribe star. 
so that uh, we can keep the lights on, we can keep the show rolling, we can build on to bigger things, you know, working on things like studios and, and, and production. So thank you very much for your support. Thanks for following. This has been the Redacted Culture Cast, where our primary interest is gun culture and the philosophy of violence and how we understand what we believe in regards to these things. Today's guest, thank you very much, Nathan, for coming on. Anytime. We will, we, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And we will see you soon.